What's going on people? I am B. Dobbins for the win and today I wanted to talk about the Destiny Taken King expansion and whether or not the amount of its content and the quality of that content is ultimately worth the hefty $40 price tag it launched with. Spoiler alert, I'm not sure that it is. Now unsurprisingly, I am once again in the minority with this opinion. By and large, it seems that gaming media and the Destiny fanbase have received this new expansion pretty positively. But I would attribute that to a phenomenon I've discussed before, that the base game set the bar so low that now people see it as a huge success whenever the game outperforms its lackluster first year, when in fact its quality is only as good, if that, as any other game is ever expected to be. For example, The Taken King has received accolades for its story. People say, oh, it's got a story this time. Now, although this new expansion has made notable improvements on this front, it still leaves quite a bit to be desired. It had a decent opening cutscene, but I still felt somewhat in the dark as to what was going on. You know, I've played through every story mission in this game, from the base game and the Dark Below and the House of Wolves at least once, and I still don't really understand why Oryx has beef with us, other than the fact that we killed his son, but then I don't understand why his son had beef with us in the first place, or why the Awoken have beef with Oryx, or who the Awoken are, or who the Hive are. So I'm watching this admittedly cool cutscene unfold in the beginning with this huge space battle unfolding, but I can't help but feel like I've started watching a movie halfway through. I have so little context for what's going on and why. Who are these people and why are they killing each other? And when it's like that, you know, you're not as engaged or immersed in the shit when it just all seems so random. And that's lame because I've actually been watching this movie from the beginning. And as I've said before, grimoire cards don't count. I and many others still don't have a smartphone. And I know for a fact that the vast majority of gamers aren't interested in spending absurd amounts of time reading tiny little texts on their phone. I am baffled as to why a grimoire card library was not included in the actual game with the Taken King or the 2.0 update. The only conclusion I can draw is that they are trying to drive higher user engagement with the phone app, which is a super annoying reason to skimp on the game's quality. Furthermore, the point to a story is driving immersion and entertainment during the story missions themselves. It's not supposed to be about completing the story mission and then the next day on the way to school reading some shit on your phone to figure out what you were actually doing, what actually happened. Now the last time I talked about the story, sucking, people said to me in the comments, well if you were paying attention it made sense. But I feel like if all it takes to be completely out of the loop as to what's going on is missing a single line of dialogue here or there, then the story is clearly pretty bare bones and basic, right? It's the difference between, you know, reading a book and a summary of the book. It's about like reading a novel and then reading the back of a novel, right? Where it gives you a quick little rundown of what goes down. Typically, most games be like, Buzz Lightyear tore viciously into the unsuspecting group of toddlers with a chainsaw. His brow dripped with sweat and his muscles ached, but Buzz held fast. When the last foe had fallen with a blood-curdling scream, Buzz kneeled to pray to Lord Zamorak and performed the holy ritual his adopted father had taught him, wherein he doused himself in tiger's blood and baby cum. Whereas Destiny just be like, Buzz killed some children and prayed. You see what I mean? There's a difference between the two stories I just told you. One is detailed and extravagant and fun and exciting and interesting. The other just exists. You see what I mean? Even if you do understand the basics of what's going on, which I know most of you fucking don't, that still doesn't excuse the extreme lack of detail in the brief nature of any kind of exposition, right? Exposition is character, setting, people's backgrounds. There's none of that. It doesn't exist. Because really, this time around, I tried to pay attention, and I was still mostly confused, as is the case with most people I talk to, and I'd actually like to pull you guys on this. How many of you, who haven't read the Grimoire cards, understood clearly the finer details of the story as you progressed through it? I mean, more than just the basics. You know, I understand Hive is bad, Oryx is bad guy. From the few cutscenes there were, I was able to deduce that Cade Six is a bad cop who doesn't play by the rules, and he occasionally bends them, and Commander Zavala is a tight ass. I'm still kind of confused about what role the Rasputin AI plays in all this, even though it seems like a pretty sensitive central character with all the appearances it's made at this point. But I still don't know what the fuck it is, what it does, or why we give a shit about it. But for the most part, it just comes off as this fairly generic story, where there's a bad guy alien who wants to destroy Earth, and I'm the good guy and I have to stop him. And the problem with that is that throughout the story missions, there's very little intrigue. I already know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna stop the bad guy and save Earth and get the chick or whatever, you know? It's like a predictable 80s movie, or an episode of House MD. There's no mystery, there's no plot twist, there's no suspense, when I can already accurately predict what the ending will be. House will diagnose the patient and save his life, except for like one or two season finales. And it's the same thing with Destiny. 
And at least in House, there was some personal drama to keep me interested. And, and yet people are giving it mad props. Because unlike the base game, it had some basic character development and included more than just the intro cutscene. And that's frustrating because no other game would really get away with this kind of underperformance. And especially a game that advertised itself in such a narrative heavy way with the law of the jungle and all that shit. You look back to something like Halo, you had this whole thing where the Covenant was having their civil war and the prophets were lying to the other races and they were scapegoating humans even though humans were forerunner and they all wanted to go on the great journey to get to their version of heaven and it was all about you know sacrificing yourself for the greater cause of being immortal that kind of religious fanatic motivation and the way it drives the narrative and characters decisions in the game was what made the whole thing so fascinating and there weren't generic good guys and bad guys right they made sure to present it in such a way that basically everyone considered themselves the good guy right the covenant the aliens were just you know on their holy crusades trying to get into heaven, which is something that I think most of our ancestors from any heritage have done at one point or another in some way. And the way that that religious fanatic motivation and the way it drives the narrative and characters' decisions in the game was what made the whole thing so fascinating. You never had any idea how it was all going to end. We never knew if Master Chief would live or die. Which Covenant species would survive? Would the Covenant Alliance survive? What would happen with the Flood? And that was so much more interesting than this super basic, you know, save Earth from bad guy alien who want to destroy Earth because he in bad mood type thing. I use my caveman language there because just like the game, it's underdeveloped and hard to understand. And when I draw these comparisons with Halo, I am, that largely pertains to the first three Halo games and Reach. I don't actually remember the Halo 4 campaign that well because I only played through it once because it was pretty linear and pretty boring. Also, uh, in Destiny, the dialogue sucks. Okay? You know, in Halo, you got famous one-liners like, I don't want to kill you, but you're just too ugly to let live. It's original. It's an original line. And it's kind of cheesy, but it's like cheesy in a funny way. You know what I mean? Whereas in Destiny, you got this. You got this right here. They brought a tank to a gunfight. It's just not that clever or original. What would be witty is if when a bad guy came at you with like a huge sword, and then your ghost was like, oh, they brought a knife to a gunfight. But it's witty and ironic because it's a super powerful knife that gives them an advantage. When usually that saying implies that someone is at a disadvantage, right? If they bring a knife to a gunfight. And motherfuckers using melee weapons in gunfights is unusual. So that would be ironic and witty. But no, they aren't as witty as a 21-year-old neck beard armchair rider like me. The tank thing has no irony to it. It's just a big-ass armored gun. And it's not that unusual for tanks to make an appearance in gunfights. You know what I mean? It's hard to describe these concepts. I just didn't think it was that witty. Sorry, not sorry. The new writers are those kids in your crew who think they're funny, and nobody has the heart to break it to them how unfunny they are, so we just keep letting them drop poorly timed one-liners that nobody understands, and it just makes everything kind of awkward, and at a certain point, you don't even have the strength to force your fake laugh anymore. And I'll leave it on that note, because I know I've harped on the Destiny story a lot with these same kind of criticisms in the past. Suffice it to say, I think the Taken King made improvements on the base game in this area, but it's still not on par with what would be expected of most other games. Now, the actual PvE gameplay is an improvement from that of the base game, but again, you know, that's not saying much. In general, they were able to incorporate more of what Bungie called raid light mechanics, but I still think the experience comes up woefully short in its sandbox capabilities, and because of that, its replay value. And in a game like Destiny, where replaying content often and consistently is such an integral part of the experience, I mean, the majority of your hours spent playing Destiny are going to be spent replaying content. Um, with that in mind, replay value is the most important thing that Destiny fans and developers should be paying attention to, and it just feels like it's been heavily neglected. So, something that most people complained about in the base game PvE was how repetitive it became because there was so little diversity in the gameplay mechanics, right? It basically boiled down to hours upon hours of going into a room, killing the bad guys, moving on to a new room, repeat that process over and over and over again uh, with the bullet sponge boss thrown in there. Uh, occasionally every now and then and then maybe sometimes instead of you going to a new room the enemies come to your room while Dinklebot you know tries to open a door or what have you. Back then by the second time you replayed any story mission you're fucking bored of it. Part of the problem was not only was there nothing new to experience in any individual level the second time you played it but there was also so little diversity in the experience between two different levels right so playing through five levels on earth often felt like you were just kind of replaying the same mission five times over, right? Because it's like all the fighting just kind of blurred together and the environment didn't play a huge role in changing the nature of those gunfights. And so it was like, it was like the only thing that was changing was the aesthetics, right? Okay, so we're in an area that looks different, but the fight basically plays the same. 
And the result is that none of those story missions were very memorable, right? Like, if you think back to Halo, you know, I can name and describe the contents of every level in the first three games, you know? Uh, as can a lot of people, but I bet you very few people can accurately recall, like, three missions with the same level of detail and specificity from the base game, or the first two expansions, you know? Excluding the very first mission and the last mission. The Taken King alleviates that problem, in that the levels are distinctly different from one another. I'll give them that. And some of them are kind of memorable, right? The, the stealth mission. They incorporated some fresh mechanics. Mechanics. One level, you're having to grab relics and transport them to certain areas where you, where you put them in a hole and it unlocks the door, right? So, you know, that's something. You have a stealth mission where you gotta sneak through enemy formations without getting detected. And, uh, and, uh, you know, what, uh, I swear to God there was more. But for the life of me, I can't fucking remember, and that right there is the problem. The mechanics were fun the first time through, but they were also painfully easy. For instance, the stealth mission put huge red circles around the bad guys, right? And if you step in the red circle, that's how you get detected. And the result is that you have to be pretty fucking stupid to get caught. Or you fuck it up because you weren't really paying attention. Which I think is like the number one cause of death in Destiny story missions. People tuning out, right? Running on fucking autopilot because they get so bored so quickly, and then they make some mindless error. And I have to start over, so I say, fuck it, it's 3 in the morning, Grandma, I'm done! Now, the strikes were a little better. I liked the Dark Blade one where you have to fight the boss in the hella thick fog, and you never know which direction he's coming at you from. That was cool. That was original. It was original, okay? Heaven, heaven, I don't remember, I mean, I'm sure it's been done in games before. Actually, I think I might remember it was done in Bioshock, kinda. But it was cool. It was well done, it was interesting, it was challenging, I liked it. It was a good strike. Or it was a good strike boss. Uh, I liked the sequence in that Rasputin strike, can't remember the name of it, but there's this cool part where you have to run to the end of this hallway and grab a relic, but the catch is the hallway has lightning strikes running through it, and there's three lanes, and you have to kind of dodge the lightning strikes and move forward at the same time. And then they throw the kamikaze skanks, which blow up, right, self-destruct on you, and they come at you. It makes it kind of difficult, actually. Uh, so I thought that was cool, I thought that was fun, I enjoyed it. Um, good mechanics. Right? I like, it's a step in the right direction, they're putting new mechanics in the game. But, at the end of the day, none of these mechanics offer much replay value. You don't get as bored as fast as you did with the base game, but after the second or third replay, even interesting mechanics become routine. Either because it's too easy, or too linear, or both. Even the strikes I liked, you know, they make you replay them so much that you start to hate them. Like, I liked the hallway, lightning, kamikaze skank sequence, but by the third or fourth time I've done it, I already know what's gonna happen, I already know how to do it, there's no surprises waiting for me, there's no sandbox, there's no different way to go about it, you know, I can't get creative with it, I can't find some unique solution, and not to mention, when it comes to the story missions, there's literally no reason to ever replay the story missions, right, except for maybe Daily Heroics, but even that's not because you're in it for the fun so much as the legendary marks, which is annoying because the story missions have to be like at least half of all the PvE in terms of just the raw content, and therefore a significant portion of what you're paying for, right? And that's a big part of why I don't think the shit's worth $40, because I bet you very few people actually give a shit about those story missions. I wish we could opt out of certain content for a lower price, you know? They should just not make the story missions and make two or three extra strikes instead, because the story mission's cool, they had a few fun mechanics, those mechanics wouldn't be fun if you replayed them a second time, and really there's no reason to ever replay them a second time, because not only were they not that fun or memorable, but there's also just literally no incentive, there's no point to it. And there's no fucking story! It's not even an interesting cutscene or experience. Oh, and those stupid uh, story missions that you do to unlock the third subclass, right, on each character? Those were stupid. They're locked on easy mode. It's like, why even make it a mission? You know what I mean? And it was on vanilla content, at least for the Warlock. I didn't play the other two characters, but, you know, you're on the Blind Watch multiplayer map, and you have to spend five minutes, like, mowing down bad guys with your super. It's just a glorified tutorial. I think maybe they should have the option to skip that tutorial, just like they have the option to skip most tutorials, which also reminds me of, you know, the character quests, right? That was something I was actually looking forward to. I thought maybe it would add some dimension, some exposition to the story of Destiny, right? Every character in the tower now has their own, uh, you know, their own personal quest line. But really their quest lines were just like tutorials for the game, right? So like the warlock, that girl with the, uh, the shaved head, what do you call her, Vanguard? the Vanguard Master Warlock, whatever you want to call her. She just has you practice Vanguard strikes. You know what I mean? And then the Cade 6 has you going out into the open world and it's just like random tutorial shit, you know, prompting you to do shit that you would probably otherwise do anyways. It just seemed pointless and there was no story to that either. The word quest, I feel like, kind of implies a narrative to it as far as gaming goes, you know. What they were was just like glorified bounties. 
So part of the problem here, I suspect, uh, when it comes to the, the I got a little off topic here. Part of the problem, I suspect, when it comes to the mechanics in uh, the story missions and the strikes is skill gap compression, right? With something like the raids, they refuse to include matchmaking because they know the skill gap and the teamwork required means that six randos, some of whom probably don't have mics, are going to have a hard time consistently getting through the raids. There's going to be significant amounts of frustration and waiting for other people to figure out how the fuck to get through the annoying platforming parts and who's assigned to what role and yada yada. Now, that doesn't mean there's no workaround to that. You know, maybe they have a hub and a tower where people can recruit other people and sort of interview one another first. Maybe, you know, maybe they only let people with mics into raid matchmaking, whatever. I don't know. But with the strikes, they do have matchmaking. And you get stuck with most of the time you're playing strikes, you get paired with randoms and none of you even communicate because why the fuck would you? I don't know. And so because that's where the bulk of the PvE gameplay and progression takes place, it has to kind of be a thing that you can play even if you don't have enough friends online or if they're doing something else, right? It can't be this situation like the raid where you have to establish a set time and you're all going to meet up every time you want to do it. People have to be able to just get on and play whenever they feel like it, right? With, with the strikes. It has to be something that can basically be done casually. They have to be able to progress as they want to progress. It can't be this kind of thing where they can only play strikes if they have a team set up. They have to be able to get paired with randoms. Uh, and that means that the gameplay and whatever neat mechanics they put in have to be simplistic enough that three randoms without mics, without communication, can get through them. It means the mechanics can't require meaningful amounts of teamwork. It has to be the kind of shit where one person by themselves can get the job done if their teammates are being dumbasses or AFKs, right? And there's just no way around that. You know, I grinded through those strikes, mostly with randoms, and even as simplistic as they were, there were times, especially during boss fights or what have you, that I would get very frustrated with the randoms, basically just because they were sucking. And when you have to grind through so many of those strikes, uh, you know, dozens and dozens of them, getting stuck on a certain part, maybe getting stuck on multiple parts where the strike itself ends up taking significantly longer than it should, that kind of shit would just make the experience super frustrating and unfun. And so I understand why they can't put complex mechanics or sequences that require serious teamwork and communication, because it would just add significant levels of frustration to a part of the game that everyone has to replay over a lot. It would be like frustration you know, times 10, because you'd have to go through that frustration again and again and again every time you got stuck with a dumbass teammate. And any of us who have been involved in online gaming for some time know that teammates, the people you get paired with, the randoms on the internet, there are a lot of stupid fucking people out there. Uh, and God love them, you know, I don't have a problem with them. Maybe gaming's just not their thing. Maybe they are genuinely stupid. Maybe they're just little kids. But uh, the problem is, you know, their level of intelligence and competence is going to play a huge part in how much fun uh, you have and how frustrated you are and with that in mind the game has to be designed in a way that accommodates for the most stupid of people so that those stupid people or excuse me I don't want to be mean-spirited not stupid people so that those you know not great gaming people uh, You know don't drag down the experience for everyone else that they get paired with it's a fundamental problem with this game and, and again, because it's strikes is the kind of thing where you have to do that again. That is the key way that you have to level up in this game at this point with the 2.0 update, right? You have to just grind those Vanguard Strike playlists. And by the time those are done, I mean, maybe some of you have like a fire team and you guys just do it all together all day. I did it by myself most of the time. By the time you're done, you've probably been paired with dozens upon dozens of randoms. You communicated with none of them. Uh... So I get it, but at the same time that sucks because when the mechanics have to be so easy to learn and so linear, uh, they get boring and repetitive that much quicker. They aren't as satisfying to complete. They become routine to the point that you're doing them on autopilot, barely paying attention, which means you can't be having that much fun. And it just quickly degenerates into this thing where you're not even doing it for the fun of the experience. You're just grinding it because you have to finally one day be strong enough to do the raid to unlock that final piece of content you paid so much money for. And that is the fundamental problem with Destiny that the Taken King still failed to fix. This was a problem in the base game I talked about it. It's still a problem. And it's going to remain a problem so long as the core gameplay experience in this game is replaying strikes. Because that's what it is at this point. I mean, let's be honest. You know, most people go through the story missions once. Each story mission gets one playthrough. Uh, after that, it's strikes over and over and over again and, and the raid once a week. The real solution would be a progression system that doesn't require you to replay the same content an absurd number of times. But we'll address that in a future commentary. However, that being said, I feel like the story missions should have more room for more difficult teamwork and communication-based mechanics because they don't actually have matchmaking anyways, and there's a lot of potential there, especially if you're only going to be playing through them once, but I digress. Now, the open world, again, 
took steps in the right direction, but still leaves me asking what's the point. You know, some of the patrol missions were a little more interesting and actually challenging when compared to what you had on the base game, uh, but I still had no desire to ever do them again uh, after I completed them the first time, right, for some unmemorable quest. That, that's the thing about this game is that even if it's slightly better, I mean, the question is, do you want to do it again? And for me, at least, the answer is almost always no. I mean, I don't give a shit about doing that again. The patrol missions, like, they were cooler, but it's like I don't have any... It wasn't so fun that I would feel the need to go back and do it a second time. Then you got your little rune mini game where you put the runes in and it spawns bosses. Um, but I mean, why not just make it its own little playlist like the Prison of Elders, right? The only tangible effect the open world has on it is that sometimes enough random players join in that it makes the shit super easy because you outnumber the bad guys. Uh, the bosses in that little game mode have pretty neat mechanics. They are challenging. Uh, if you do it with the traditional fire team of three, but it still wasn't fun enough that I felt compelled to go back for more. Something was missing, and I just couldn't put my finger on it, so I played the raid. In theory, based on the things I said I wanted during the base game, more innovative and interesting and challenging mechanics, I should like the raid, because it had that stuff. But by the time we got to the end of it, I was bored, and you know what? I'm not going to do it again. Now, Probably part of that has to do with the fucking platforming, which gets hella old hella fast when one or two people can't do it and you have to sit there for 15 minutes waiting for them to figure it the fuck out. And to be fair, sometimes I'm the guy who can't do it, which is even less fun because you have to just keep trying to make that one stupid jump that you just can't get right on the stupid fucking hive ships that for some reason are giving you a taxi ride to, you, to their boss so you can fucking shank his ass. Those are some dumb motherfuckers if you ask me. Why though? Why is it not fun? Why even with fun mechanics and interesting puzzle platform jumping challenges was I not enjoying it? This is what I wanted, wasn't it? And that's when I finally figured out what is fundamentally fucked up with Destiny PvE, what is rotten at its core. It's not something that can be fixed with an expansion. It'll take a whole nother game and maybe even then it'll suck. The simple truth is that gunfighting in Destiny PvE is as unexciting and monotonous as dry humping a wall. And I'll explain why. Pretty much everyone agreed that the big spongy bosses at the end of most strikes in the base game got pretty dull pretty quick, right? We didn't like the spongy boss fights, and we recognized that clearly with the boss fights because those fights took so long. Now, they fixed that somewhat with the expansion by adding in some interesting mechanics in the in the strike bosses again, like with the Dark Blade and the Thick Fog. Uh, but when it comes to the foot soldiers, the regular infantry adds you're fighting all the time, Really, you're engaging in the same kind of boring fight that people disliked in the base game. Every single gunfight against every single enemy is a micro-grind. A micro-grind against a micro-sponge. It's those boring, spongy boss fights that all blur together and become somewhat monotonous, but they've just been scaled down to, uh, you know, groups of enemies instead of one single huge enemy. The enemies never really require you to employ different tactics while gunfighting, right? They have different critical spots, but really that doesn't change much when you're gunfighting. You, you know, you aim slightly higher on some enemies and slightly lower on certain other enemies. Maybe they move at slightly different paces, but for the most part, you employ basically the same tactic for every single enemy. Take cover, pop out from cover, land as many crit shots as you can, pop back behind cover, repeat, repeat, repeat. Because the enemy's time to kill is always so high, that's really your only option. You know, you can't go in there like Rambo and fucking grenade and melee and, you know, maybe you can with a shotgun, but most of the time, especially on, if you're doing a PV challenge, it's actually challenging like the raid or you're on a harder difficulty or whatever, um, you're not going to be able to do that. You just kind of spam grenade when you have it and hope that you hit the most targets possible and do the most damage. You know, use heavy ammo when you got it, but for the most part it's just in cover, pop out of cover, pop back behind cover. Um, it's just like a constant battle of attrition. It's just about grinding their health down, just like you had to do with the boring, spongy strike bosses that nobody liked. The biggest tactical decision most players have to make is, well, okay, sometimes you have to fall back because your position gets overrun or something, right? You weren't killing the bad guys fast enough. Um, and this is why so much of the PvE just sort of blurs together. And this is why I think I got bored in the open world and the raid, because I was just like, dude, I'm done with this. It doesn't make a huge difference what enemy you're fighting or where you're fighting them. The experience is basically the same throughout. The fight itself is the same. Now back in Halo, and we're talking about the first three again, because uh, Halo 4 was different in a lot of ways, and a lot of what I'm about to say doesn't apply to it. But back then, 
In the first three Halos, different kinds of enemies required very different strategies to be defeated. You could treat all the enemies like bullet sponges and just try to grind through them, but usually that'd get you fucking whacked because your time to kill was much lower as the Master Chief than the super special uh, guardians with their space magic. And that was a key factor as well because the player health was so much lower than it is in Destiny. You were required to kill the enemies as fast as you could, and that meant finding the most effective, clever, and creative ways to take out certain groups in certain situations. It meant prioritizing certain enemies. It meant predicting the reactions of some enemies to the death of other enemies. For instance, when you had to fight a pair of hunters, you were required to play very differently than if you were fighting a flood combat form or the flying buggers, right? Fighting an elite with a sword was very different from fighting an elite with dual plasma rifles. When a pair of hunters show up, you have to get behind one of them and shoot it in the back without getting killed by the other one, right? You kind of have to treat them like bulls almost and let them try to melee you, then dodge out of the way and then tear into their exposed back. And if you're a real badass, you can get them separated and trick one into accidentally shooting the other. But you have to be quick and nimble and a badass like me. Uh, and then you got like your flood combat forms, which were invulnerable to like 75% of the weapons in the game. And after you kill them, you have to go around destroying their dead bodies or they'll get back up And if, if an infection form reaches them. And where do the infection forms come from? The creepy ass turd looking carrier forms that ate way too many crabby patties. Uh, and those things sneak up on you and, you and blow you apart and you want to kill them, but you know that if you kill them, it's going to release all the infection forms and reanimate all the dead bodies bodies around you so you decide not to kill them right away until you can deal with the dead bodies or if you have a plasma grenade you can stick them and that will instantly kill all the infection forms inside of them too or what you do that's even more badass is hit them with a well placed frag grenade that blows them into another group of bad guys where they then explode and kill all the bad guys because they're like a super grenade. If I kill this elite I know all his little grunts will run away unless it's Halo 3 in which case they will take out plasma grenades and try to kamikaze me. So you have to think about who to kill first. Fighting four grunts with plasma rods was a completely different experience from fighting them with needlers and plasma pistols, you know? And, be and because you had such low health, you couldn't just grind it. You really had to prioritize which enemy to kill first. And then they also just had cooler environments for fighting. And I know I've talked about this before, but remember fighting on the gondolas? Like the giant fairies and the bad guy fairy would come up next to you and you feel like you're on two pirate ships tearing into each other and fighting on the scarab while it's moving. And they had zero G fights in outer space and then you had cool unique boss fights like that one heretic guy who had jetpacks and kept cloning himself so it's like three of him and they're all flying in different directions or the prophet that you had to board his little special chair and punch him in the fucking face while dodging his super scary honor guard with their swords. And if you wanted to, so you could engage in stealth tactics in almost every encounter, even if they weren't all asleep. But a lot of the time they were. And I just don't think Destiny really has any of that. You know, make me fight bosses while I'm platform jumping. I don't know. It, it never makes a difference what enemy I'm fighting. Whether it's a Cabal, a Commander, or a Hive Knight, or a Fallen Commander, or a Minotaur, I basically fight them all the same exact way every single time. You know, there's no room for you to come up with your own creative stealth tactics, right? Like back in Halo, you know, if you get behind the elite somehow, you can punch them in the fucking back and one hit to take them out. So you can come up with like creative routes you run where you, you know, run through certain enemy positions to get to the elite before he sees you and then punch him in the back. Destiny just becomes very repetitive very quickly regardless of what you're doing and you know don't even get me started on the lack of vehicular gameplay and the awesome sandbox opportunities and experiences that provided uh, that Destiny just completely opted out of and look I know I've made these exact same criticisms before in my early videos earlier this year and I'm sorry if this is redundant I'm sorry if you've heard this all before but I don't know what else to say because the bitter truth is that even though the Taken King is a step in the right direction it still fails to fix a lot of the problems that plagued the base game the game itself is still some basic ass shit no I don't think the Taken King is worth $40 the multiplayer is neat I guess you know Rift and Mayhem are neat the maps are neat I paid 10 bucks for the MP stuff but if you take away the fancy graphics and the artificially generated hype, the PvE stuff would be like one of those free games in the store you download just for shits and giggles when you got nothing else to play. I think the problem is it just has to be easy so that everyone can do it, right? But the problem is my generation of gamer grew up on hard games, you know, COD 4 on Veteran, Halo 2 on Legendary. Doesn't get harder than that. And if you've overcome those challenges before, then Destiny is just like fucking child's play, you know? But child's play is what sells these days, and I'm okay with that. I'm not mad. I just wish there was a AAA game that wanted to genuinely offer a new experience instead of just finding some way to, you know, manufacture these incentive systems that keep people hooked based on a false sense of importance that they've attributed to a game who generated that false sense of importance with, you know, this multi-million dollar marketing campaign. I'm telling you right now, you take away the marketing campaign, this game would get significantly lower scores on its reviews from both users and critics. Because it, it, people get it in their head like, oh, this is the most popular thing, this must be the best thing. 
this is the thing I need to be good at. But they just bought that. They just bought that little perk for themselves. They didn't earn it. They didn't earn it. Now, before I go, I know I'm going to get some flack for buying and playing this latest DLC, to which I basically refer you to my defense of uh, buying and playing those other two expansion packs. You know, I've only played the bare minimum amount of the content in The Taken King, uh, and that's even less out of principle this time and more just because I really don't enjoy it. But the simple truth is I intend to continue covering Destiny, uh, as this is the most popular uh, game out right now. Uh, it's relevant to the largest amount of people. It's the best context in which to make arguments about gaming in general. I also think it's the leading innovator in squeezing people out of money and, uh, you know, by selling hype as opposed to content. And for these reasons, it's important. It receives extra scrutiny and, con and to continue to cover the game. I have to keep playing it and analyzing it and so forth, you know, back during the first two expansions, which out of principle I'd refuse to touch until about four to six months after they came out. There was a lot of news and developments and game mechanics that I wasn't able to cover, which looking back on, I wish I had been able to cover. So, you know, telling people not to buy DLC from the beginning was sort of a doomed over dramatic plan. Uh, I'm sure even most of you who supported that video have ended up buying the DLC. It's also worth mentioning that that video pertains specifically to those first two expansions, because at the time I didn't even know there was going to be any DLC after that, and I also feel that those are the two expansions that were cut out of the base game, right? So, now I have bought The Taken King. I still strongly strongly recommend that all of you wait to buy it. Not to make some protest, not out of principle, but just because I really think it's in your best interest. I think you'll save money and get a better product, uh, and I especially feel this way now because, again, I really don't think it's worth $40, and especially if spending that $40 means you don't have enough for an entire separate full game like Rainbow Six Siege or Fallout 4 or Black Ops 3 or Halo 5 or Star Wars Battlefront, all of which I think would be uh, better purchases than the Taken King in terms of how much playtime you eventually get out of them. The For the Win query of the day is, for those of you who have played it, how much do you think the Taken King is worth? Please remember to rate. This is Batman, signing out.